Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing something a little different. Uh, in fact, different in as far as the gear that I'll be using. Uh, over on one of the Facebook groups, they decided to do a certain razor type day. Uh, now, it is a razor that I own, but I have never used it. So I figured, you know what, why not? It's, I've had this for a little bit. Might as well join this group's uh, time and use this razor. And I'll show you that razor in just a few moments here. Uh, so tonight we're going to be using the Cube as a pre-shave. I've really started to enjoy what the Cube does, just builds that volume makes it a nice voluminous slick thicker lather they're thoroughly that is my personal preference so we just start with the cube a little bit there uh, this cube is non-mentholated uh, i do have the tube travel I guess to travel cube, it's not like a cube, it's shoved in the tube um, that I picked up at PAA when I was there earlier this year. And that is mentholated. Uh, however, the cube is not. The performance is still phenomenal on both products. Tonight it did, it is pretty dang warm. I don't know if you can see the water glistening off of my forehead. Which reminds me, again, I forgot a hat or a bandana or something. One of these days I remember. Hopefully. So there we go, got that all nice and rubbed in. And I'm sure you all are kind of thinking, oh, dude, what what were you talking about? Oh, I'll get there. But first, since we used the cube, uh, I lathered up. The soap I'm using is one of the very first soaps that I ever got um, when I first started this whole wet shaving rabbit hole. And that soap is none other than CAD by PAA. This was the third soap I ever bought. Uh, the first one I ever got was the Rockwell Cream, and then I got Paraso Green when I was at West Coast Shaving, then I went to a store here in Utah and picked up CAD. And now that my fourth was um, Barrister and Man's 42. So tonight we'll be using CAD, harking back to one of the first days of when I first started wet shaving. The brush I'm going to be using is my Rich Man Shaving Hulk with the S1 Innovator. Now, I do love this knot. Uh, the knot is absolutely fantastic. It is a badger and synthetic hybrid, so you get the nice soft bristles from the badger, but a little bit of backbone from the synthetic. So you get the water and heat retention, or cold retention if you want it cooler shave and all of the uh, the boosts you get with the natural hairbrush you get that with this knot and you get the benefits of the synthetic with the quick dry time and backbone and everything else in the hair as well so it is a very good knot and if you watch my last video where it was from that Facebook live that I posted if you didn't I, I get it but I, I do love the size of this handle. Now Rich did um, make this physically, specifically for me, and this was a gift for my birthday this past year. And I love the coloring. I have not seen, if you can see on the bottom here, so it has a purple and green core, and then he has clear resin around it. And I like the shape. As I mentioned down here, it could be a little rounder, but when I'm loading, honestly, 
I hold it like this, so I, I rarely notice. But I do enjoy this. The size and size of the handle and the feel of this knot, it's just, it's fantastic. This will whip up a bull lather like none other. As you can see here, plenty of lather in there. And this will face the other side of the wall also. I don't own many natural hair brushes. Uh, the other one I have is a whipped dog silver tip. And that thing is floppy, has absolutely zero backbone. I don't enjoy using that one nearly as much as this one. Now I do know other artisans are coming out with brushes similar to this. Uh, some may, you know, I don't want to get into the whole who created that knot, there's usually be around that. I'm not going to get into it. If you want to get into it, go look at the forms. Um, but I'm just going to say it's a great knot. I love using that knot and that brush. Uh, also, because it is really warm today, uh, I also use the Chill Mill from PAA. Put in, I think, five or six twists from this to get that wonderful menthol kick. And I can feel it kind of cooling down already. I love that. Um, also whipped up the soap in my Captain's Choice bowl. Now the razor tonight that I've been hinting at for the past six minutes, <laughs> and I haven't even chewed yet, wow, is this beautiful Valet Auto Strop. Uh, this is one of the earlier ones. Now I do have in this little blue container, I do have some of the original vintage blades. Um, I believe this one was made in like 1920s, so this is almost 100 years old. Still works, still holds the blade beautifully. I, like I said, I've not used this one yet. Um, even though I do have some vintage blades, I did look it up, this is like the Gen 1 or Gen 2 that can take a, a basically an unmodified gem blade as long as you move the spine. So I did that and you can see, and that's just a typical gem blade. Now, if you have not seen an auto strop in use, uh, before we get into the actual shaving, I have the strop right here. This is the strop that came with the auto strop. You just put this through this little slot on the back here and the comes out the top there and you just strop it and it'll go, you pull it, the blade glides on one way, as soon as you start going the other way, flips it over and the blade goes on that way. And then this is, and then that's just most of this today, it's an open cone, so maybe fairly aggressive. Uh, like I said, I haven't used it yet, there may be some blood. But here's the original strop for this, compared to this kind of more narrow strop for the straight. I should have that hanging up here on my towel bar behind me. Now I did, this is, as I mentioned, this is a brand new modified gem PTFE blade. I did run this on the strop about um, eight times earlier today in preparation for today's shave. Now that we've let the lather sit and soak and we're almost nine minutes in, let's go ahead and get going here. So like I said, I have not used this razor yet. Looking at it earlier, it does seem that the geometry of the head is very reminiscent of a 1912. So I'm kind of approaching it as I would with them using like an 1812 uh, or a clog proof, where it's more flatter on the face. Now with the open combs, it kind of reminds me of the Micromatic Open Comb or the MMOC. But this is very efficient and I'm not feeling a whole lot of blade feeling here. And this is when I'm not going to put away wet because of all the gears on here. I don't want to mess with that. But even though this has a lot of blade exposure, I mean, it's, it's all blade almost. There's very little blade gap. So it's, just, it's a comfortable razor to use. And the handle's decently sized, decently lengthwise. Look at that, soap's dry. Soap's gonna drain out a little bit because it's, it's so warm in here. But, oh, this is, this is beautiful. This 
is an absolutely beautiful razor. So, um, I got this razor as part of a pretty sizable trade with uh, Josh Morris of Redbeard Shaves. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel, if you're not aware of his channel, I'll put a link in the description below. So Josh is someone that I used to talk to all the time, and then, you know, life gets busy. I mean, we still talk every couple of weeks or something like that, every few days. But I know he's busy getting ready, getting ready for a move. We've moved, just, you know, life gets in the way. Huh. A little tuggy around the mustache area. Not bad, but just a little tuggy. It's not, it doesn't like the kind of the MMLC style angle. It seems like this likes to be a little more flat, like a 1912 or a hog proof. But anyway, getting back to uh, how I got this razor. So Josh is into thrifting as well. He really, one of his other rabbit hole obsessions, besides brushes and all that, is um, carnival glass. So he and his wife once a year will go out and they'll take a vacation to those two and they will go and look, you know, they'll go thrifting. In this past year, Right around the time I was really getting into the gem style blades, he came across this auto strop, the clog proof, and a rolls razor. And we worked out a deal where I would get those three razors and I would trade him a bunch of items as well. Now I've used the clog proof quite a bit. I've tried to use the rolls, but regretfully, just gonna moisten this up a little bit. It has been a little bit too much time talking at the game. Regretfully, on the rolls razor, uh, now the version I have is a traveler, and it comes with two blades. Regretfully, those blades are not shave ready. So I need to uh, get those honed. I've tried to use the rolls unsuccessfully. Uh, the blades are bad enough that they won't even shave the hair on my arms. But it's because of Josh that I have this razor as well. I'm gonna do this shoot tonight. And this is rather enjoyable. Not sure you can hear that feedback. I'm gonna be a little careful right around here. Not sure if you can see that little wonderful mark behind my ear there. But I was shaving with the straight and I was going in for a little cleanup down here and I got myself right there. So there's just a little bit of a, a little bit of a war wound. That's still healing. Alright, nice first pass. Mm. Still trying to learn the angle on that razor is again first time use. So I wasn't expecting anything simply amazing yet, but it's not bad. It, it is definitely performing really well. And the menthol kick in this CAD is just exactly what I was looking for tonight. Also in the description, if uh, you are interested 
in a brush from Rich. Uh, I will say that his looks like the, he has some really innovative shapes. His shoots are definitely unique. I've not seen anyone else do ones like he does. There will be a link to his Etsy page in the description below as well. I don't know if you can hear that feedback, but wow. Lots of feedback with this. I'm digging it. Yeah, that's nice. And it's long enough there that I can go a little bit without having to rinse off the razor. Because I know there's guys out there that don't like the sound of the running water. But regretfully, I can't clog. I can't, there's not a stopper for my sink. It's just the rod is gone, and we're not going to be here in this place that long, so I'm not going to fix it. That way, when we moved in. Oh, wow. This razor is really nice. Really nice. I will say it was slightly intimidated when I first pulled it out to use it today. Because of the open combs and just that blade exposure. But it is not bad. It does not feel aggressive at all. Just a nice, wonderful open comb shave with a gem blade. Still trying to find the optimum angle for this. And the handle kind of reminds me of the Starling, so my muscle memory is just going by the angle that I use for the Starling. Which is very similar to that of the MMLC. Uh, it's more of a not quite flat kind of, what's that, 30 degree or so? Unlike almost flat against the face, like you would with the um, 1912 or clog proof. I know there are various versions of the um, the auto swap out there, and I would say for just these two passes, that if you enjoy a gem style blade or a gem razor, modern or vintage, you can find one that takes either the modified gem blades. Maybe you just pull off the spine. Playing off the spine is super easy. There's tons of tutorials out there on YouTube. Maybe you just need two pliers. Uh, Scott Ostermiller, the, uh, the clean shaver, did a great tutorial. I will put the link to that video in the uh, description as well. But I watched his and I saw how easy it was and I did it this morning. Yeah, anyway, if you do like the uh, modern or vintage style gems, and you can find one of these for, that's in decent shape, 
I'd recommend it. This is what I'm gonna have to break out a little bit more often now that I've used it. Although I do want to take make sure that this portion isn't damaged, it'll still hold the blade. Uh, mine is supposed to have a clip on this side that you have to kind of maneuver to get the blade out. Uh, that portion is missing, but it still holds the blade very securely. Very efficient shaver. Very efficient. I'm, I'm really liking this. Now, I'm not feeling the harshness that I normally feel with the first use gem blade. I don't know if that's because I stropped it on leather or just it's the razor design because I did, as I mentioned, run this on the strop. About eight times. Uh, eight laps on the strop. feels really smooth. That's normally a pretty big trouble spot for me. Or do some cleanup on that area. That's really nice there. Y'all don't know how weird it feels to <laughs> or how weird it is to say, yeah, I ran this on the strop. And I'm talking about gem blade. That just feels weird. Wonderful, wonderful shave you're going on. This is just thoroughly enjoyable. This may be slightly longer because I'm just enjoying this so much. Yeah, this is efficient. Um, probably not as efficient as the MMOC which is kind of my go-to vintage gem blade razor, or gem razor. The comfort level is, it's a comfortable razor to use. I don't chase the dragon too much. This is very nice. Even though I can still hear feedback, I don't feel much stubble there. So let's give me audio feedback that's still cutting, but I do not feel stubble, except for like right here, my normal trouble spots, but this is really enjoyable. Mm, 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 mm. Beautiful, beautiful shave. No problem being under the nose. There's little, those little tricky whisker hairs. Okay, you need to go up there. 
overall, a little bit of the trouble areas still need a little bit of touch up. But not too bad. Now one thing I'll say that uh, you see a few people that do also do videos on YouTube. You won't see them like re-wet brushes or, I mean some of them do. But, you know that goes, some of the other guys say, do it work special you, man. I mean, if you see something I do that works great. If you see something that something you that does better, and works better for you, awesome. I mean, I've only been doing this for a little over a year. I'm still learning. I mean, heck, I'm using a almost a 100-year-old razor right here for the first time. I'm not perfect. I cut myself pretty good with the straight razor the other day. So yeah, I mean, everyone's still, everyone's a little bit different place in the journey. And I'm not seeing a lot of stubble in there either. That's really cool. This is really dang efficient. I'm loving this razor. Loving this thing, man. So Josh, if you watch this, thank you for this trade. I know I said thank you when we first did it. I don't know how long ago it was. A while ago. This razor is awesome. It's always the troll spot right there on the chin. I hate that. Oh well. Don't want to chase the dragon too much. Because I hate when I can't shave the next day. Now when it has to shave daily, my hair just grows in too quickly and too coarse to not shave daily. Let's see, I can go across. Mmm, that was a phenomenal shave. Absolutely phenomenal. Took a quick cold water rinse here. And do a little clean off, probably off camera. This is already going running on the longer side of what my videos normally do. So do a quick recap. And I'll do a head shaving clean up off camera. So the eraser I used is either Gen 1 or Gen 2, I can't remember, um, Autostrop or Valet Autostrop. Uh, this thing's almost 100 years old with a brand new Gen PTFE blade, which just has been despined and slipped right there into the razor slot. The soap is my very first introduction to PAA and artisan soaps. Phenomenal smell, and that is CAD or Cease and Desist from Phoenix Arts and Accoutrements. Whipped up in my copper Captain Choice bowl. I also used a little bit of the chill mill to add a cooling effect. I will be also adding uh, some chill in with my aftershave to continue that cooling effect. The aftershave I will be using this evening is none other than Barbasol, what's this? Pacific Rush, also mentholated. Really going for that cool, cooling effect. Uh, now the brush I used was this monster of a handle in the Rich Man Shaving. I have dubbed this Hulk because of the purple and green. 
uh, with an S1 Innovator. I believe this is a 26 millimeter knot. Extremely soft, yet with plenty of backbone to really dig in. Uh, great for bowl lathering, face lathering, whatever you want to do. Residual thickness on that soap with, and I also did use um, the cube. Pre-shave. Love the cube. It's a, um, I use that pretty much with every soap now. I've really been on a cube kick. She's a dragon a little bit here. But really, the cube adds that slickness that I can do this. And Cat is just phenomenal. And that's the CK1 base. I got that before CK6 even came out. Mm, phenomenal shoe tonight. Definitely would recommend looking into the Auto Strop if you do like vintage razors, unique razors, or gem blades. They are, this one is phenomenal. This was <laughs> a very enjoyable shave. Uh, I don't know what version I have that it came in this case, which is still in really good condition considering how old it is. Um, but you can see there are the vintage blades. There's nothing about four left. And my strop just folds up nicely right in there. So beautiful, beautiful uh, little razor there. Josh Morris, thank you again for that trade. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning in. And hopefully my sitting here will change in a couple weeks. Uh, I am scheduled to go back on the road. Uh, at least two trips coming up. So we'll, we'll get back to kind of the standard format for this channel, at least for a couple of shapes there. So again, thank you guys for tuning in. We're almost at 32 minutes. If you've watched it this far, thank you. Also to all my new subscribers, thank you guys. I appreciate every single one of you that subscribes and watches this channel. I know there's a lot of shaving channels out there and you have plenty from which to choose and I appreciate all of your views. So again, guys, have a fantastic day or weekend whenever you catch this, uh, whenever you watch this video. So thanks again and catch you all in the next one.